Dear chairs, dear colleagues, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present our study today. So this is a study on the effect of duodenal acids on duodenal permeability and on the duodenogastric reflex. So the first author of the study is uh, Hannah van Heel, who was a former postdoc in our lab. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today, so I will present the study on her and the group's behalf. So just as a short introduction, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but you know that dyspepsia is really defined by symptoms coming from the gastroduodenal region. And in the overall majority of these patients, 70% or even more, we failed to find an organic cause for their symptoms. So this is what we call functional dyspepsia. So the cardinal symptoms of functional dyspepsia in Rome 4 and also in Rome 3 are postprandial fullness, early satiation, and this is the postprandial distress syndrome, and epigastric pain and epigastric burning, which is the epigastric pain syndrome. As you know, functional dyspepsia is highly prevalent, occurring in up to one-third of the population, has a considerable impact on quality of life, um, and the current treatment options are actually insufficient. Um, we only have a few, and they are not very efficacious. Despite the fact that functional dyspepsia is highly prevalent, um, the pathophysiology is still um, incompletely known. This is a figure that I took from the Rome 4 publication, published in Gastro last year, showing some of the abnormalities which have been shown in patients with functional dyspepsia. So you see there are some central abnormalities, anxiety, stress, and so on, and some peripheral abnormalities in the stomach, such as um, delayed gastric emptying, impaired accommodation, and so on. However, in the recent years, we've learned more and more about also the fact that the duodenum is involved in pathophysiology of functional dyspepsia. We know there is low-grade inflammation in the duodenum, um, increased permeability, and so on. So in this talk, I will focus on decreased funding accommodation and the low-grade duodenal inflammation and permeability. So indeed, we have shown in a previous study published in um, GUT a few years ago, this is also work by Hanne van Heel, that there is increased permeability of biopsies in functional dyspepsia patients mounted in ussing chambers. So and this was also associated with changes in um, tie junction, adherence junction, and desmosome-related molecules. We also have shown that there is low-grade inflammation characterized by increased infiltration of mast cells and eosinophils. However, we do find increased permeability, but we don't know what is the underlying cause. Um, possible um, reasons for the permeability are food components, um, are gluten involved, uh, FODMAPs, and so on. All of these are being investigated. Of course, there may be a role for the microbiota. Um, we know that psychological stress can impair permeability. We've shown this before in healthy volunteers. This may be a, um, playing a role also in functional dyspepsia. And there can also be a role for other luminal components, such as bile, but also acid. So why acid? So this is work from Dr. Lee when he was in um, Leuven. And he showed in patients with functional dyspepsia, um, with the pH catheter clipped in duodenum, that especially in the late postprandial period, so two hours after the meal, that the pH is significantly lower compared to healthy volunteers. And this is since then confirmed by others as well. So there is more exposure of the duodenum to acid. So the acid in the duodenum, if we use acid in healthy volunteers and perfuse the duodenum of healthy volunteers with acid, this leads to a sensitization of the stomach in healthy volunteers to gastric distension. So this is a study where a barostat was introduced in the stomach, and when the duodenum is perfused with acid, the symptoms tend to be higher. And also there is a relaxation of the stomach when the duodenum is perfused with acid. So from the start of acid infusion, you see that the volume in the gastric barostat balloon goes up. And then finally, um, the duodenal acid also impairs the gastric accommodation reflex. On the bottom graph, you see a normal response. So after the meal, there's a nice relaxation of the meal, and this is blunted when the duodenum is perfused with acid. So this is what we know. We know that duodenal acid is um, activating an inhibitory duodenogastric reflex, so some alterations in gastric motility. But it may be that the duodenal acid is really causing this through impairment of duodenal integrity, so increased intestinal permeability, um, and also causing the duodenal low-grade inflammation. And these, the integrity and the inflammation, may be the intermediate players between the acid and the gastric motility alterations, eventually leading up to symptoms of dyspepsia. So what we did, we have tested this in um, the study that I will present to you in healthy volunteers. 
So this is a um, study where we recruited 10 healthy volunteers where we perfused the duodenum with acid for half an hour. And this was um, randomized between acid and saline in a randomized crossover fashion. So for half an hour, five mils per minute. So what we get is we get a duodenal pH going down from about seven to four. And as you remember, this is in the range of what we find in the late postprandial period in patients with functional dyspepsia. So besides the duodenal perfusion catheter, we also inserted a um, high resolution manometry catheter. And when starting acid perfusion, there is a relaxation of the um, stomach. And then half an hour later, after we stopped the perfusion, one hour after starting the experiment, we took duodenal biopsies and analyzed permeability, inflammation, and immune histochemistry. So the biopsy is mounted between two halves of the ussing chamber. There is a mucosal site and a serosal site, and we characterize permeability by measuring the transepithelial electrical resistance, or TIR, and the transmucosal flux of dextrans of 4 kilodalton. So these are the results. So first we look at the intragastric pressure profile, and um, we confirm the previous results with the Barostat. This is now with high-resolution manometry probe. There is a nice drop in intragastric pressure, which indicates a relaxation of the stomach with the acid. And this can also be quantified by, by the area under curve, which is lower with the acid. Then the Ussing chamber results. Um, indeed, as hypothesized, we see that with the acid perfusion, there is lower tier and increased passage of the labeled dextra. So duodenal acid really impairs um, duodenal integrity locally. We try to look a bit further into the underlying molecular abnormalities of this increased permeability, and we tested several um, molecules related to tie junctions, adherence junction, desmosomes, but by gene expression, we did not find any significant alterations. So we then we went on and looked at protein expression, and here we did find a lower, significantly lower expression of Claudin-3 with the acid perfusion. Then for some of the proteins, ZO1, beta-catenin, and ecotherin, we also looked at localization and at intensity of the signal at the level of the tie junction and adherence junction, but here we failed to find any differences induced by the acid. So going to low-grade inflammation, we did not find any differences in terms of the number of eosinophils, which were stained by major basic protein, so no difference with acid and uh, mast cells stained with tryptase. However, um, low grade inflammation is, is more than just numbers. So what we did was we looked also at expression of um, molecules related to eosinophils and mast cells. And we showed here that there is an increased expression of tryptase in the acid perfusion condition. So showing that there is actually a mast cell activation by the acid. However, we don't know whether this is just a bystander phenomenon or whether this is causally related um, in inducing the permeability defect or inducing the gastric relaxation. So we designed a second study, again, 10 healthy volunteers, where we did exactly the same. Just a few differences. What we did was we perfused all the volunteers with acid. So no saline perfusion in this study, but we pre-treated all the volunteers um, with disodium chromoglycate or DSEG which is a mast cell stabilizer, or placebo, and this was mannitol. This was, again, in a randomized crossover, double-blind fashion, just to see whether we could block some of the responses we observed in the previous study with mast cell stabilization. So these are the results. In terms of intragastric pressure, so relaxation of the stomach, so the duodenogastric reflex, no differences with or without mast cell stabilization. We see a nice decrease in intragastric pressure in both conditions. Similar for duodenal permeability, there is no difference in tear, no difference in passage of the fluorescently labeled dextran. We also didn't find any abnormalities in the molecules related to tie junctions. And then for the duodenal inflammation, um, similar results, no alterations in the number of eosinophils on top, um, stained by MBP, or mast cells stained by tryptase. And also, we looked at expression, again, of major basic protein for eosinophils and tryptase for mast cells, but no differences with or without the mast cell um, stabilization. So in summary, we confirmed previous data that duodenal acid exposure relaxes the, um, the stomach. So the duodenogastric reflex is confirmed in this study. 
We did find that duodenal acid impairs duodenal integrity, so it has higher uh, mucosal permeability, and also um, low-grade inflammation characterized by a mast cell activation. However, by blocking, stabilizing the mast cells with um, disodium chromoclicate, there was no effect on duodenal integrity, neither was there an effect on the duodenal gastric reflex. So this may suggest that the mast cells are just a bystander phenomenon and not causally related to any of the other changes that we have shown. However, this remains to be shown, of course, because as I've shown you, we did not find any alterations in tryptase expression by Western blood as well. So we are not sure whether we actually really stabilized mast cells or not. So based on these results in healthy volunteers, we could hypothesize that the increased duodenal acid exposure that we find in patients with functional dyspepsia may contribute to the permeability defects and low-grade inflammation which is observed in functional dyspepsia patients. And based on these results, it seems that stabilizing the mast cells appears to be insufficient to prevent the acid-related barrier defect, but there's a word of caution as I've just explained to you. So some future prospects, of course, we need to better characterize the uh, mast cell activation status, and this is currently ongoing by electron microscopy, looking at degranulation, histamine release, fax um, experiments, and so on. We also need to look back to our functional dyspepsia patients and correlating duodenal acid exposure with barrier defects measured in the ussing chamber and low-grade inflammation in these patients. And finally, I think a very interesting option is also to look at duodenal microbiota in functional dyspepsia patients, because we know that duodenal microbiota are very sensitive to sudden changes in pH, as in patients with functional dyspepsia. And so look where they may be an intermediate player between acidity, permeability, inflammation, and symptoms. Thank you.